Hello and welcome. Monkey pox has been discovered uh, across the world. There are roughly about 100 confirmed cases now from 12 countries. The incidence of monkey pox is obviously nowhere near COVID-19, but the fear is definitely there. The question to ask is two kinds. One is from a public policy and a public health standpoint, what does monkey pox really mean, particularly for a country like India? And more importantly, as we go forward, what is the immunization strategy that we should follow or continue to follow or stick to as we've done in the past? Remember, there are similarities between monkeypox and smallpox, but let's understand that uh, from an expert and also more importantly, what that public health response should be in the context of monkeypox and lessons from the past. To discuss that, I'm uh, joined by Dr. Ishwar Gilada, an infectious diseases and expert and a consultant for HIV and uh, sexually transmitted diseases who also was recently re-elected to the Governing Council of the International AIDS Society. Dr. Gilada is serving his uh, first term at the IIS's Governing Council. He is President of the AIDS Society of India, Secretary General of the People's Health Organization of India, uh, and uh, that being a premier non-government organization that spearheaded India's HIV awareness campaign since 1985. Uh, Dr. Gilada, thank you very much for joining me. So let me start with a straight and simple question. What is monkeypox as you understand it? See, monkeypox is a virus which is from the same family from where we have seen smallpox and also vaccinia which was used for making a smallpox vaccine and uh, commonly we see in STD practice molluscum contagiosum. So these two, three viruses are from the same family and uh, probably it is uh, originated from smallpox itself, uh, pox virality family, uh, sometime after the smallpox was eradicated. When you say smallpox was eradicated, uh, you mean in India or all over the world? It was eradicated all over the world around 1979-80 and therefore the smallpox vaccination also stopped during that time. Uh, there, there are hardly any manufacturers of smallpox vaccine but they, they are, there are some of them or at least one of them I know about. Right. So one of the reasons for the fear of monkeypox is that this is also a zoonotically uh, generated or, or distributed virus in, in as much as it comes from wild animals or animals. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, it has come originally from uh, yeah, animals uh, in the rainforest area of the Central Africa and West Africa uh, from squirrels, rats, some of the dharmais or other monkeys and therefore it is called monkey uh, monkeypox. Uh, it was originally uh, noted in the Western Africa and uh, Congo and they had two different clades which is the Congo clade and West African clade but one country called Cameroon where both the clades were uh, found uh, in their monkeypox cases. And why is it spreading now and, and uh, what is triggering this spread at this point of time? Uh, no one can say with certainty but definitely it is out of the uh, endemic zone which is uh, western and central Africa and it is in, found in non-endemic zone. Usually when uh, such things are found in endemic zone nobody is bothered because it goes around there only whether in the monkeys or in other animals or uh, human beings and it is contained and sustained or, or there only. But when it comes out uh, in little bit large numbers and currently it is spreading without any kind of travel history to those uh, endemic zones. And uh, as you stated correctly, it was 11 countries, today it is 19 countries and almost 132 cases diagnosed and another 100 of them which are suspected. So uh, it becomes a problem when it is out of the, uh, we don't say containment zone but endemic zone and it is spreading faster uh, as uh, we, have, we have seen in UK itself there are 56 cases like we say up to Chapan, UK has already 56 cases uh, registered. And Spain and Portugal, they have more than 30 cases each. So, uh, and most of them are seen in the Schengen country areas. Uh, why I am saying Schengen? Because if you have a Schengen visa, you land in one country, you can go around uh, 15, 16 countries. And we are seen everywhere, whether it is Germany, Italy, Sweden, uh, the Netherlands, Belgium. And it started spreading from a rave parties uh, in Spain and uh, Belgium. So, right. uh, sexual transmission was. Uh, it was thought of earlier also, but in rave parties, uh, when rave parties followed by the sex parties, the uh, uh, transmission occurred and therefore it has been uh, considered more dangerous than uh, earlier thought of. Right, so monkeypox is transmitted as I understand from WHO descriptions that, uh, uh, that there is close proximity, there is uh, you know some form of exposure to bodily fluids, but also respiratory droplets now which of course makes it similar to COVID-19? Uh, probably WHO doesn't want to make a same mistake what they did for COVID. 
therefore they are saying uh, droplet at least not they didn't say aerosol but it is not transmitted through aerosol a droplet means uh, surface transmission again uh, from the bush meat from the rodents which are going around going to the dogs and cats and from there to the domestic animal to the human being so uh, forest animal to domestic animal to human being and now human being to human being uh, close contact in the family skin right. to skin contact and therefore it is uh, coming in picture with the sexual contact or sexual touch right now what is the uh, as as you understand it is there a natural body resistance to uh, a monkey pox or even a small pox uh, virus at today uh to some extent yes because wherever small uh, monkey pox is seen in elderly population who have been vaccinated for small pox the symptoms are very few hardly one or two blisters also and in those which are uh, in 20 to 40 population which are uh, not vaccinated because uh, vaccination stop in around uh, 80 so uh, those which are not vaccinated the cases are severe therefore uh, and then they realize that small pox vaccination gives almost 85% protection and therefore it is thought of that small pox vaccination uh, to be restarted in those areas where it, it is becoming endemic so when you say that uh, you know we stopped smallpox vaccination which could have been a, a, a provide immune immunity to uh, monkey pox in 1979 so that would mean that most people who are born before that would have vaccines in a, even including in india yeah because you see uh, smallpox was a, a known disease for 220 years and thereafter when it was there widespread in india all over the world when vaccination started vaccination became almost 100% self percent to vaccine it was a fatal disease it was disfiguring disease it was pox pox where for lifetime we still see those people uh, of uh, uh, my or little bit uh, higher age with a pox mark and uh, therefore it was almost 100% vaccination but when it was eradicated globally uh, who also waited for a couple of more years uh, how uh, is uh, after the eradication not a single case recorded since 1980 and therefore vaccination stop but uh, vaccine uh, does exist because uh, of two things one is that they always thought that smallpox can be used as a bio warfare and uh, therefore vaccine should be there and there is one company which may makes that vaccine and it can be also used for treatment of uh, rabbit pox or uh, monkey pox or other uh, such kind of pox diseases right so if if you were to uh, look at where we are today as as a if you were to, and and look at this as a public health challenge what would you suggest is a better way to approach it is it is it immunization is it uh, wait for cases to turn up and cure them because this is not uh, as fatal as let's say covid or it, that seems to be the case so i i think wait and watch is the best policy secondly we should be vigilant and not only the uh, thermal scanner will help because we have not uh, seen any kind of cases detected through thermal scanner for covid people having fever will just take a paracetamol and sit on the flight or ship so i think that is a uh, bygone strategy uh, what we should look at is because there are uh, four or five signs and symptoms which are there in 100% people with monkey pox and one of them is a pox mark or uh, vesicles or pustules they are on the face they are on the palms and soles uh, palms and soles are affected in 80 to 90% cases so just asking at the airport show your palms and soles or sleeve up little bit show your face uh, if somebody is covering the face Uh, and secondly lymph node enlargement is again in 100% people and that is neck area you don't have to go in armpit and in the groin area so in the neck area if you see lymph node enlargement if you see a pox mark or a vesicle if you have a, 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 in addition to that person is having fever in addition to that person is struggling from that affected area i think that will make more sense and we should be vigilant secondly uh, if when, uh, we uh, do have such kind of cases which could be uh, suspected we need to have a differential diagnosis where we else you can see uh, lymph node like the plague time when at the bombay central they started looking at uh, lymph node they found some plague cases suspected plague cases but they were hiv positive so they, they had a lymph node enlargement because of hiv so we should look at those issues whether it's a tuberculous lymph gland whether it's a hiv lymph gland whether it's a lymphoma hodgkin or non hodgkin if the uh, pox mark or vesicles are because of some kind of drug reaction it is a pemphigus vulgaris it is a bullous pemphigoid whether it is a herpes zoster which can be seen more commonly in india so we need to differentiate between these and that but we should keep a suspicious eye right. and uh, if at all it is found as you, i come to your second question what kind of treatment currently smallpox vaccine can be treatment also like if a person start developing a symptom 
within a two or two or three four days you give smallpox vaccine it also work as a therapy so vaccination can be prophylactic it can be therapeutic and the smallpox vaccine uh, i think we should look at uh, remanufacturing smallpox vaccine and uh, india no better country than india could do that uh, and there are a couple of drugs being tried which are antiviral and let us see if that uh, uh, that will work and and if i wanted a smallpox vaccine today uh, in in india i could go and get it uh, somewhere i don't think you will get it here but there is one uh, company which is uh, i think uh, uh, bavarian nordic company which makes that vaccine okay. so i don't know whether indian companies would be having but you see if at all they will be having they will be having a uh, expiry stock some people may be maintaining who made the vaccine at that time or uh, uh, some companies may be making for the sake of for uh, some uh, demand internationally particularly from africa or where because in uh, us they found uh, around 2003 or so uh, about 70 80 cases of uh, uh, monkey pox at that time at that time there was a demand of uh, right uh, the vaccine right so essentially we, i mean if we have to scale up and uh, and and raise increase production if if they, this were to spread more uh, virulently than it has already yeah yeah you see uh, you, you should see the current era last 40 years we see more and more viral infections because uh, infections are usually of uh, four types bacteria fungi parasites and virus and we have all effective antibacterial uh, anti uh, anti fungal anti parasitic but there are no effective antivirals therefore this kind of man proposes god disposes scenario there more and more viral infection coming and they are all in circulation the only thing is that they should not become endemic and pandemic Uh, like uh, we have seen uh, what has happened with the covid and uh, that's the reason that we cannot discount any such kind of outbreak also like uh, from a small place of wuhan it went all over the world it brought the entire world at knees uh, in for two years right uh, and that's the reason that we should be vigilant and we should be looking at even this could become a bigger problem may right. not become a big problem but we should have a pandemic preparedness we should not have a, a unilateral program or a uni- uh, what do you call a microscopic program of only one virus we should have a pandemic preparedness that if at all it comes who should be dealing and rightly so this time government of india wrote in ncdc there is a national center for disease control along with icmr because in the covid time they only directly wrote in icmr so you require a public health approach right okay and i'm going to come back to that in a moment but a question that I, that uh, that uh, i missed asking you you know uh, we've seen chicken pox uh, in this country many of us including uh, me have had it uh, many years ago is there any connection between chicken pox uh, and uh, monkey pox or small pox at all no not at all chicken pox is a different pox uh, this is a different virus is a herpes virus uh, varicella zoster herpes virus hominis is herpes simplex now it can be genital it can be labial etc and herpes zoster is a reactivation of the chicken pox uh, chicken pox and herpes uh, uh, zoster is a same virus so in the childhood if you don't get chicken pox in elderly age you get uh, uh, herpes zoster and it is from the same family but it is not from the same family as now as a small pox so small pox vaccinia uh, moluscum and uh, this uh, monkey pox they are from the same family right okay so just to come back to the the public health you said that you know that we need to treat this as a uh, you know as a, we need to be in a pandemic mode so to speak and need to respond swiftly and be alert at all times uh, what else should we be doing uh, in this new world where zoonotic diseases can uh, you know arise suddenly spread fast and reach you faster than you could perhaps imagine see being a vegetarian myself i would ask people to be vegetarian uh, Uh, secondly if you at all eating a meat you should not eat raw meat uh, thirdly uh, there has to be some limitation between habitation and uh, wild animal so if uh, wild animal areas also habitated by human being then the, you are likely to risk yourself to getting those infections which are there in wild animal from there to human being or from there to the domestic animal so we should be vigilant on such thing and uh, wherever there are uh, rodents uh, moving around with the bush meat or uh, with, uh, with wild animal area coming to the uh, domestic animal area then there is not be problem so i don't know there is one single answer for that but i think we should have more and more uh, uh, system where either you don't eat meat if you tell you eat meat it should be totally cooked meat rather than the raw right and and you said that you know these things obviously spread from other countries for instance uh, monkey pox could come from a more tropical area or africa in this particular case and other other zoonotic diseases may come from other parts of the world so travel and uh, uh, is is obviously a critical contributor to this 
Which one? To any, the spread of any virus, uh, uh, travel, as in people uh, traveling from. Factors. So, I, I don't think there's any contributory factor than the globalization of everything. So, anything which is available in one part of the world will go to other part of the world. Lot of theories of uh, cold area, hot area, trop uh, tropical area, non-tropical area, they did not hold any good for uh, COVID. So, we cannot say that it will uh, hold good for uh, another new infection also. Uh, secondly, uh, whenever there is such kind of mobility, like uh, currently world is wiser than what it was two and a half year back, they would uh, definitely take some kind of containment measures. Uh, uh, thoughtfully so, Indian government also is responding and a lot of cities and ports and airports have been put on alert so that we can contain them as early as possible. Otherwise, uh, uh, keeping a good uh, immunity, uh, uh, keeping your uh, all uh, uh, comorbidities under control, that is very important because any new infection coming, that will affect more and more to people who are comorbid, not keeping their immunity properly. And right. uh, we, uh, we should not only consider keeping a good immunity during the time of pandemics. We should always keep good immunity. Right. And and last question, you know, we had the, we and I said India had the National Smallpox Eradication Program in 1962, uh, which focused on outbreaks. And earlier, I think it was, it was looking at a more all-encompassing approach, subsequently changed to focusing on specific areas. Uh, any lessons from that, uh, that, that would apply for today, if at all? I don't think any one lesson will be there from that. Uh, but because of the globalization, things were different at that time and different now. Uh, there are more challenges now than it was earlier. It could have been, uh, and people were docile at that time. You put a containment zone, people will stay. In this area, uh, in this era, people don't want to stay in containment zone. Containment is a kind of a stigmatization. So at that time, um, I, 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 all these stories I learned from my parents and grandparents that uh, how they were kept uh, aside uh, you know, in a small uh, uh, kind of hut area. Uh, uh, all the areas were sealed, all towns were sealed, uh, houses were sealed, and they used to just put one cross, one death, one cross, two dead, two cross. Now people will not listen. So I think uh, those those areas were, uh, areas were different. This era is different. We need to look at two things. One is vaccination, second is treatment. And uh, we should develop more and more antiviral because there are possibilities now because of the uh, right. some kind of you know, techniques which have developed. And we should look at that and invest in that. Right, right. Uh, Dr. Gilada, it was an absolute pleasure speaking with you once again. Thank you so much for joining us.